I'm basically an animal biologist. I'm not a human biologist. So I, if I'm writing about people, I'm writing from the point of view of what's unusual about humans, um, because that's what interests me. And as soon as I can find something that I think humans do that other animals don't do, that suddenly is what I'm interested in writing about. So that's why I wrote about teenagers and female body shape and and, and the other one. And but having written about teenagers. That was a fairly straightforward thing because there is a phase of life where if you actually look into it, it's a phase of life which has obviously just been dropped into the human life plan. And there really is no equivalent of it in any other species. No other species has that second decade of life and all the really very specific things that happen in it. So then, but then I realized there was something similar about middle age, although I knew in advance that writing about middle age was going to be inherently more difficult, more complicated, partly because there are so many different and sometimes conflicting ideas uh, of what middle age is. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some things that are very um, sort of vague, like the so-called midlife crisis. And then there are some things that are very, very specific and well, we used to think unique to our species, such as the menopause. Um, when I started write, writing the book, it was thought that humans were the only species where female re reproduction just stops at a very, at a pretty fixed time and in a very controlled, ordered, sudden way. Not a sort of slow, rambling deterioration, but something switches off very quickly. Um, and so there were these vague things and there was very, very specific and at that time thought to be unique to humans mm -hmm. uh, things. Um, and, and I think that's probably why in the end my definition of what, of what middle age was, it was based on this premise that it, it's something that only humans have. There isn't really an equivalent phase in other animals with certainly not the reproductive change, um, but the changes in the brain. I think so many things in human life are related to the sort of tremendous pressures and the amount of time it takes to bring up our offspring. You know, if, if you're a female chimpanzee or if you're a male chimpanzee, um, you know, you want to produce baby chimpanzees, but and uh, a female chimpanzee will rear one baby chimpanzee at a time, and then once it gets to a few years old, they're pretty much done, finished. They hang around for a while, um, but they're pretty much complete. Whereas human life isn't like that. If, if you're going to produce a baby, you're going to be caring for that baby probably for, say, I don't know, 16 years, let's say. Um, and it requires a huge amount of input from both parents, which is unusual amongst mammals. Um, it's not because it's not men are particularly lovely creatures. It's just because human babies need the input of at least two adults, usually, to be successful. Um, and this, this isn't a sort of moral argument, this is what, when you study you know, resources in hunter-gatherer populations, you find that offspring need the input of about 2.2 adults. Yeah. Um, and so having a human baby is much more of a commitment than it is for any other species. And the success of that baby eventually is not just based on it being born and having a bit of milk. It's the sort of 16 years of care from usually two adults. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that commitment when you have that baby. And it means that there seems to be a point, and it's very clear cut with women, it's less clear cut with men, where it, it benefits you and benefits your offspring if you stop and focus on rearing the offspring you already have. And you'll have, you may well have several offspring of different ages, which other animals don't do that. You know, they don't have a baby of two and a child of five and a child of eight and a child of 11. Yeah. Whereas humans obviously do do that. Um, there's a time when it benefits you to stop and care for those offspring you already have and not risk having any more. Because if you have any more, first of all, it takes away resources from the offspring you already have. And secondly, you may be dead by the time they're 12 um, and what happens to them then? Uh, and so I think that that's where menopause comes from. It's one of the reasons, uh, there are probably other reasons for menopause, 
Um, of course, this is much more complicated with men because men don't undergo a reproductive menopause. And this raises the question of, and yet if they stay with the same female, they have effectively done the same thing. If, you, if, a, man, if a man stays with a woman who's gone through the menopause, he may as well have had a menopause as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so there's this phase of life where humans are still meant to be looking after their offspring and yet they can't produce any more. And that really came down to me as being what, what middle age was and why only humans have